I recently came across an article in Scientific American looking at a study done in 2015 which sought to answer the question of why schizophrenia occurs in the human brain. I thought it was fascinating and wanted to share some of the findings with you all. I will also provide a link to both the article and the study in the description below. Traits of mental illness like depression, OCD, and anxiety have all been observed in the animal kingdom. Birds obsess, horses sometimes get pathologically compulsive, dolphins and whales, especially when in captivity, have been known to self-mutilate, and dogs experience anxiety, particularly of note as separation anxiety. Dr. Laurel Braitman wrote, Every animal with a mind has the capacity to lose hold of it from time to time in her book, Animal Madness. But one mental disorder that does not take shape in any animal other than humans is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia affects over 1% of adults, making it relatively prevalent in human beings. And so this begs the question of why such a potentially devastating illness, which we know is heavily genetic, is still presenting itself when you would think that genes predisposing to psychosis and schizophrenia would have been strongly selected against. It turns out that psychosis or schizophrenia may be an unfortunate cost of having higher complex cognition or bigger brains. The study in question was particularly curious about looking at segments of our genome called human accelerated regions, or HARs, which essentially are short stretches of DNA that underwent rapid evolution in humans following our split with chimpanzees. These HARs don't encode for proteins in the genome themselves, but rather help to regulate neighboring genes. Now, since both schizophrenia and these HARs appear to be primarily human-specific, the researchers wondered if there may be some sort of connection between the two. They found that HARs do sit closer to schizophrenia-related genes genes along the human genome than would be expected by chance, which suggests that HARs do play a role in regulating genes which can contribute to schizophrenia. These HAR-associated schizophrenia genes were found to be selected for more, which leads us to believe that there is some sort of benefit to these genes despite harboring risk for schizophrenia. Wondering what these benefits could be, the researchers turned to gene expression profiling, which basically looks at where and when in the body certain genes are actually active. They found that these HAR-associated schizophrenia genes are found in parts of the genome that also influence other genes expressed in the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain just behind the forehead which is responsible for higher order thinking. Impaired functioning in the prefrontal cortex is thought to contribute to psychosis. The study also gets into how these HAR-associated schizophrenia genes are also involved in various other human neurological function within the prefrontal cortex, including transmission of the neurotransmitter GABA. GABA is involved in the suppression of dopamine in certain parts of the brain, and its impaired transmission is also thought to be involved in psychosis and schizophrenia. If GABA is impaired, dopamine can be left to run wild, which can contribute to things like hallucinations, delusions, and disorganized thinking that characterizes psychosis. So why hasn't this developed in other species as well? Well, the authors of the study suggest that the emergence of human speech and language has a relationship with schizophrenia genetics. GABA is critical to speech, language, and other aspects of higher order cognition. And the findings of this study suggest that there is a connection between schizophrenia risk and intelligence in the human species. The Scientific American article puts it another way whereby, complex function begets complex malfunction. The study does not confirm this idea of the evolutionary trade-off hypothesis and notes that schizophrenia genetics is profoundly complex. The study does, however, support the idea that evolution of our advanced cognitive abilities may have come at a cost, this cost being the predisposition to psychosis and schizophrenia. So that's a brief overview of why schizophrenia occurs in the human brain, but not in any other animal species. Reading this article was a little bit hard at times because they did really lean heavily into the schizophrenia brain being malfunctioning. And that didn't really feel right with me. And it feels like they're not allowing for neurodivergence to be okay and acceptable and a normal part of evolution. And so it did feel a little bit like it was coming from an ableist lens. And I'm not sure if that malfunctioning brain languaging narrative is really helpful in terms of understanding mental illnesses like schizophrenia, but I understand where they were coming from in terms of trying to explain how it's happened from an evolutionary standpoint in humans and why it hasn't happened in other animal species. So thank you so much for watching this video. Just a quick reminder before I go that we have an online peer support community. Well, we actually have two, one geared towards schizophrenia spectrum illnesses and the other geared toward more broader mental health concerns. And so if you are interested in checking out either of these online peer support communities. We have links to those in the description below, as well as in a pinned comment. These peer support communities are a really, really great way to interact and engage with peers who are going through similar things as you. And it's a really great way to kind of 
provide validation and just kind of discourse with people who are going through similar challenges or experiences as you pertaining to mental illness. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to check that out. Thanks so much again for watching this video. And as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.